everyone welcome back to another video in the web security academy series in today's video we'll be covering lab number three this lab will leverage a sql injection union attack that will allow us to extract information from the backend database all right let's look at the description so this lab contains a sql injection vulnerability in the product category filter so we've got an sqli and it's in the product category filter the results from the query are returned in the application's response so you could see them in the browser and it says so you can use a union attack to retrieve data from other tables we'll learn what that is in a second the first step of such an attack is to determine the number of columns that are being returned by the query you will then use this technique in subsequent labs to construct the full attack all right so what this exercise is saying is that you've got a certain parameter, the category filter, that is vulnerable to SQL injection. Now, the way we want to exploit this filter or this category parameter is by running a SQL injection union attack and eventually being able to retrieve data from other tables. So we're not interested in, for example, the products table. We're more interested in tables like a user's table that contains the authentication credentials to the users of the application. So it will perform a union attack that will allow us to retrieve data from other tables. However, this is not done in one step, it's done in multiple steps. And one of the first steps in order to exploit this vulnerability is to determine the number of columns that are being returned by the query that filters uh, on category. And then once we're done that step, uh, there are a couple of more steps that will be done in subsequent labs in order to construct the full attack. So in order to learn how to run uh, this attack, it's going to take, I believe, about two or three videos before we can actually extract data from the backend database. All right, so the end goal over here for today's exercise is to solve the lab, determine the number of columns returned by the query by performing a SQL injection union attack that returns an additional row containing null values. So the end goal is to determine the number of columns returned by the query. And we'll do that by exploiting the SQL injection vulnerability. All right, so before we access the lab, we need a little bit of background knowledge on how the union operator works. All right, so take for example, you've got two tables, table one and table two. Table one has two columns, A, B, and table two has two columns, C and D. Now, table one contains the values one, two. Table two contains the values two, three. And then table one also contains the values three, four. And table two contains the values four, five. Now, imagine you have this query over here. Select A and B from table one. So select columns A and B from table one. The result of this query would be the values in those columns. So it would be one, two, and three, four. Now let's do a query that uses the union operator. So the same query above. So select A, B from table one. Union select CD from table two. All right, so what the union operator does over here is it concatenates the results of the two queries into a single result set. So it'll run the first query, select AB from table one. So the result is one, two, three, four. And then it'll concatenate that result with the one of the second query, with the result of the second query, which is select column C and D from table two. And that would be two, three, and four, five. 
and the results are displayed into one single uh, result set, so in, in the same table. All right, so now you might be wondering, well, how does this relate to a SQL injection attack? Now, imagine you have this query over here, and all it does is it displays products from a product table. Now, I'm not interested in seeing the products in the product table. I care about more tables, for example, the uh, users table that contains the username and hashed passwords of all the users of this application over here. And so what I can do, if this is vulnerable to SQL injection, I can add this query over here. Let's say it's a users table. So I'll inject this query over here that says, don't just give me the, the products in the product table, but also give me the usernames and passwords from the users table. And this way it allows me to extract information from other tables that are being used by the backend database. Now, before we even get to the SQL injection attacks, it's important to know that there are certain rules that you need to follow when you're, when you're using the union operator. And we'll get those from the official Microsoft documentation. Union operator SQL. So if you go down, you could see over here. The, the function of the union operator is that it concatenates the results of two queries into a single result set, just like we saw for those two tables over here. And then it says the following are basic rules for combining the re result sets of two queries by using union. So the first rule is that the number and the order of the columns must be the same in all queries. And we saw that this is the case for our query over here. So uh, the number of columns that were called in the first query are two, A and B. And then the number of columns that are called in the second query from table two are also two, C and D. So we satisfy this rule. And the second rule is that the data types must be compatible. And we saw over here, all the columns A, B, C, and D are of type integer. And that's why this query works and doesn't throw an error or an exception. All right. Okay, now that we know how to use the union query, how can we apply it in order to achieve our end goal, which is to determine the number of columns returned by the query? So let's say SQL injection attack. Imagine you have an application that is running a query at the backend. However, because you're doing a black box pen test, you don't have access to the code and you don't know the number of columns that are being used in that query. So let's say question mark over here and it's from say table one. Now, if this query is vulnerable to a SQL injection, you can use the union operator in order to determine the number of columns by iteratively doing a bunch of requests to, that determine the number of columns. And the way we're going to do that is we'll do union select null value. Now, if the number of columns is not the same in this query, so in the second query over here, if the number of columns is not the same to the number of columns that are being called in uh, the first query, then we'll get an error. And if we get an error, then we know that the number of columns is not just one. So we know that it's incorrect number of columns. And so we'll keep running this request over here iteratively until we no longer get an error. So instead of using one null, we'll use two null values. And again, if you get an error, that means the number of columns over here is incompatible with the number of columns over here. And so you still haven't gotten the correct number of columns until you keep iteratively doing this. And then if you end up getting a 200 response code, then you finally reach the correct number of columns. And we'll see how to do that in the exercise. 
All right, so that's way number one, and that is how Hortzwigger wants us to complete the exercise. But there is a different way, which is a little bit cleaner. And let's run that as well. So let's say way number two. And what that uses is the order by clause. So let's say order by SQL. And again, we'll look at the Microsoft documentation. So it sorts data returned by a query in the SQL server. All right, so if you've got a query that says select A, B from table one, and then it says order by one, what that will do is it will order by the first column. If I said order by two, it'll order by the second column, which is B. If I said order by three, that column does not exist, and so it will throw an error. And this is another way of uh, determining the number of columns that are being used by the query, because what I can do is I can iteratively keep increasing this number to, you know, one, two, three, four, so on, until I get an error. Once I get an error, that means the column that I'm trying to order by does not exist, and therefore this gives away that number of uh, columns that are being used in the query. And so we'll do both methods in the exercise, right? I'm gonna close this. And let's access the labs. Okay, so it looks like we've got a shopping application. You can refine your search based on category. So this is the field that is vulnerable. If we look back at the end goal over here, this is the field that is vulnerable. So if I select gifts, it'll only show me uh, the items that are related to this category. So the items that are related to gifts. And if you look over here in the URL, this is the category parameter, and this is where it gets filled out. Now, since this is the field that is vulnerable, I'm just going to run a basic test case, so a single quote to see if it breaks the application. And it does. So we get an internal server error. This leads me to believe that it's vulnerable to SQL injection because what happens is that I introduced a character into the SQL query and it it threw a syntax error, which resulted in an internal server error. Now to confirm that it is vulnerable to SQL injection, I'm going to give it a value that is correct. So it won't break the query. So I'm gonna comment out the rest of the query. And if that returns a 200 response code, then I'm convinced that it is vulnerable to a SQL injection. All right, so that's good. Let's go back to our general use case, which is just selecting gifts. All right, so now I need a way to determine the number of columns returned by the query as the end goal states over here. And we learned two ways. Let's apply way number one, which uses the null values. So I'm gonna close the query over here and say union select null. and hit enter, I get an internal server error, which leads me to believe that there isn't only one column in the query. And that makes sense because it looks like, just based on the information that is displayed in the response, it looks like the query has to have at least a column that displays the name of the product. It also has to have a column that displays the price of the product and a column that uh, uniquely identifies the product. So some kind of ID column that is not getting displayed in the response. And so my guess is it has three columns, but let's apply, uh, let's apply this attack iteratively so that it works in every use case. And to do that, I'm going to use burp suite. For those of you that don't know what this is, it's a proxy that sits in the middle between my browser and the application. And this way, any requests that I make in the browser will get intercepted through Burp first and then get sent to the application. Similarly, any responses that come back from the application go through Burp first and then to my browser. I'm going to click no over here. Oh, let's close it. Yes. All right. I'm going to tell my browser I'm using a Foxy proxy extension and I'm going to tell it to use Burp as the proxy. And I'm going to hit enter. And you'll see over here it intercepted the request. I'm going to send that to repeater. 
and remove the intercept, turn it off. Okay, let's go to repeater. All right, so over here, let's make that a little bit bigger. All right, so over here, we exploited the SQL injection by saying union select null and then comment out the rest of the query and then you need to URL encode that the browser does that for you but in this case you're using the proxy so it's control U and then hit send And then in the response over here, you get an internal server error. And let's put that side by side so that we could see it. All right, so over here, we added only one column and it was incompatible with the backend query that does the filtering. And so it gave us an error. Now let's add another one and see if that works. So for the space, we'll just add a plus. We still get an internal server error, so it has more than two columns. Let's add another null. So in this query right over here, I have three columns right now. Hit enter. We still get an internal server error, but notice over here that we forgot a comma. Let's hit it again. And we get a 200 OK response. And if you notice over here, it says, congratulations, you solved the lab. And what that means is that the number of columns in this query matches the number of columns in the query that is responsible for filtering uh, based on category. And so now we've determined that the number of columns is equal to three. So that's the first way of doing it. The second way was using the order by clause. So order by. So what this does is it'll order by the first column. So control U to URL encode, hit send, and we get an invalid request. And that is because this was incorrectly done. Here we go. Hit send, hit enter, sorry, space. Okay, perfect. All right, so this is ordering by the first column. This is much better to do through the browser because you could actually see it order the results. Uh, so we'll do that here instead of the proxy. Okay, so notice over here, nothing got ordered, which leads me to believe the first column is one that we don't see, which is likely to be the ID column that uniquely identifies uh, the gift items. So let's try two. Now two should be this column over here. So these entries should be ordered based on the first letter of the alphabet. And we saw that happen over here. Perfect, now let's do three. And that should be the price column. So it should be ordered in ascending order. And here we go. So you've got 27, 45, 98, and 99. Perfect, so we know that there are three columns. Let's do four and we get an error. And the reason, again, we get an error is because chances are the query threw an error that this column does not exist or is out of bound, and this resulted in an error at the application level. All right, so now we know that the number of uh, columns is four minus one, which is three. So we've successfully completed the end goal of this exercise, if you would like to see a detailed version of the video where we both exploit the vulnerability manually and then script it in Python, check out the video linked on the screen. Also make sure to hit the subscribe and share button so that the video reaches a wider audience. Thank you and see you in the next video.